the men uh, taking rides in 1940s in a 1940s biplane with the Ageless Aviation Dreams Foundation. The nonprofit honors our veterans with free oh, flights. Nice. Very cool. Next, the bad. Your cheap wine could soon get a lot more expensive. Guzzle buddy. What's a guzzle buddy and how does it work? Well, there's two easy steps. You just plug it and chug it. <laughs> well, poor weather conditions driving down global wine production to a historic low. That's expected to drive up prices. Uh -oh. mm. Finally, the ugly, a drunk Yankees fan storms a field with a cigarette in hand. The guy made it as far as third base, dodging security guards before he was tackled and cuffed in the seventh inning, but uh, his team did end up winning eight to three over the Twins, and thankfully he had all his clothes on. I never understand. Yeah, yeah, I never understand why people do this. It's just never a good idea. No, probably Ever. not. Ever. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good day. But tonight I ask that we raise our glass. God bless France. God bless our alliance. And God bless America. The president again declaring that the 2015 nuclear deal is, in his words, insane. We will have a great shot at doing a much bigger, maybe deal, maybe not deal. We're going to find out. For me, the key pillars of this new approach we want to adopt, and it's exactly what President Trump said. Fired FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe may have actually given a stand-down order during the initial phase of the Clinton email investigation. That Columbia law professor James Comey used to leak sensitive memos. He previously worked as a special government employee for the FBI while Comey was director. The last couple of days, we've seen this real bro Romance developed yeah. between the president and his French counterpart. Thank you. I like him a lot. Winning Wednesday, live from New York City. Welcome aboard, folks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And hello it's to you, filling in for Brian today. Pete. Not bad. It's right. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Middle of the week. That's right. Now oh. we're downhill to the weekend. Hold on just a second. Okay. You got oh, a little hand of right there. Oh, thank you, sir. I, feel I like want I'm, to make you now sure I'm perfect. You're perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was quite a moment. I, that was an amazing moment. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, all right, well, a bromance appears to be brewing between President Trump and Emmanuel Macron. The pair toasting to an unbreakable friendship at Trump's at President Trump's first state dinner. They look happy there. The <laughs> president and first lady Melania Trump pulling out all the stops at the White House in the state dining room last night. And they even held hands. Griff Jenkins live in Washington <laughs> with more Griff. Good morning. Good morning, guys. They always look happy. We have been witnessing for the last few days constant handshakes, hugs, even air kisses. As you say, the bromance just keeps on growing, and it was on full display at last night's toast at the dinner. May our friendship grow even deeper. May our kinship grow even stronger. And may our sacred liberty never die. Please allow me to raise my glass to the friendship, the unbreakable friendship between France and the United States. This after a day of critical talks working to bridge the divide over the Iran nuclear deal with that May 12th deadline, this friendship, this alliance may have signaled a bit of a breakthrough while President Trump continued to oppose the deal, calling it insane and threatening Tehran over their tough words. His newfound friend Macron seems to have surprised many when he suggested a new path forward, saying that the deal currently is not sufficient and that they need to work on a new deal. Macron will continue building that case to Day, uh, when he addresses a joint session of Congress at 10:30 this morning, we'll find out more. But back to the dinner last night, it was First Lady Melania who took the lead in planning the state dinner down to every last detail and stole the show with that hat. That hat right there. The president toasting Melania, calling her America's incredible First Lady. So for any of our viewers who want to know, that hat was by Hervé Pierre in her evening gown by Chanel. Both clear nods to their newfound French friends. Guys? Now, Griff, I read that the dress, the Chanel dress was hand painted. Yeah. Is that right? What does that mean? Well, that's right, and certainly a, a note of high fashion because in France, the uh, epitome of haute couture, you have things like Chanel dresses that are hand painted. <laughs> 
I love this conversation between answer. men. I didn't know you had that depth, Griff. Yes. Well done. That's called couture. <laughs> the Chantilly lace, the Chanel gown, the Michael Kors white suit yesterday, that Hervé Pierre hat. We can't afford any of it, but it's all just stunning and gorgeous. That's and the hand painted dress uh, that Melania is wearing. That's right. right there. That's right. Wow. Right there, the Chanel. You know, but don't tell the mainstream media that uh, the hat was beautiful because these are some of the headlines. Is Melania Trump channeling Celine Dion or Beyonce? Because the media had made fun of, of their hats in the mm. past. M uh, Melania Trump's massive white hat has caused quite the stir. Massive white hat. Armchair fashionistas <laughs> had takes on Melania's giant hat like she has an entire birdcage under there. Bird Just cage. haters. Mm. She looked haters. beautiful. She looked fantastic. Yeah, of course. She, and the, as the, always. The amazing thing about this whole visit is Emmanuel Macron and Donald Trump could almost agree on nothing. Like, you know, he, they have totally different right. views on a lot of big issues, but a personal relationship means you can find ways to get together on a few things. Yeah, and Macron did essentially say, uh, maybe a new deal on Iran, Mr. Yeah. President. And the president goes, hey, wait a minute. Where have you been? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Uh, meanwhile, let's talk a little bit about what's going on uh, with the investigation into the FBI and the Department of Justice. Uh, Sarah Carter has confirmed this. Uh, word out of Washington is apparently six months of those text messages between the lovebirds uh, have been located and are about to be released to Congress. Apparently, the Department of Justice and the Inspector General has had them. Unclear why exactly they haven't released them mm -hmm. till now, but they were expecting them last night. Looks like the first thing this morning. This is yes. this is huge news. Is. If you think about how much we learned about what went on at the FBI and DOJ just from the other text messages mm -hmm. and the from the OIG report, these are the text messages from right after the election until the special counsel was triggered. Right, right. Those very moments when they could have, who knows what they were right. talking about, scheming about, and the fact that those were withheld. Whenever something's withheld with no justification, mm -hmm. given a nice, neat six months, well, you just mm -hmm. want to, something's in there. And so Sarah Carter says we're going to find out pretty soon what it we is. We'll find out what's in those text messages. But the even bigger news is what Sarah Carter is now reporting on. She said that Andy McCabe, who, as you know, the IG says that he lied under oath that he mm -hmm. lacked candor. She is now saying, Sarah Carter, that he might have told the FBI agents to stand down mm. when the New York Times in 2015 reported Hillary Clinton's email scandal. He might have told his agents at the FBI to stand down. This would be unbelievable. So the timeline is March 2015, New York Times reports it. Mm -hmm. Andy McCabe is overse overseas, and he allegedly sent an electronic communications telling his agents that he's displeased with this investigation and this reporting by the New York Times. Listen to what Sarah Carter says. I've been looking into this for over a year now, is that McCabe actually gave a stand down order, according to the sources that I spoke with, uh, in the early phases of the Hillary Clinton uh, use of a private email. And that would have been in March 2015, after the New York Times first broke the story that she was using a private email for government business. Uh, shortly after that story came out, uh, FBI agents uh, with the Washington, D.C. field office opened an investigation into Hillary Clinton. Clinton and began to uh, look into all aspects of that. That's right. Uh, Mr. McCabe, however, when they first started looking into it, the D.C. F uh, field office, he was overseas. And uh, that's when he uh, started making some calls and told them supposedly to stand down. Uh, a former FBI agent who Sarah Carter has spoken to says he now faces potential criminal charges because that could be obstruction yeah. of justice. Well, of course. And, and if there's electronic communications, the phrase used, mm -hmm. there's probably an email, and, and a lot of that has had to been turned over through the process of the OIG. Uh, it, it, two things on that. This comes after his wife received all that money from the Clinton-connected right. folks. Doesn't mean that's why it happened, right. but doesn't look good. Looks a little partisan. And then you remember the leaking that he did on the Wall Street Journal. He did that to try to make it look like he was actually going after the Clintons and the email server, when in actuality, now it looks like behind the scenes, he mm -hmm. was working to undermine that investigation. I mean, the duplicity Simplicity of trying to look tough while maybe asking them to stand down. We may find that out as well. Andy McCabe could have been the epicenter of a lot of this. Sarah well, Carter said it was multiple FBI officials that are telling her this. Right. Yeah, they're frustrated. They wanted to look into someone bleach bidding their server. Right. <laughs> and the, the timing is curious because the Inspector General for the Department of Justice, Michael Horowitz, his report is about to come out in the next couple of weeks. So are we finding out about this now because that's the next act? 
We don't know. We're just uh, telling you what Sarah Carter is reporting this morning. That's exactly right. All right. Meanwhile, let's talk a little bit. We've been down in Washington. Let's go to Georgetown University. All right. Nancy Pelosi. Oh, good. Leading Democrat, as you know, from California. She's speaking at Georgetown. And, you know, she's famous for that crumbs comment. This young man who's a student at Georgetown stands up and talks about the benefits that those crumbs have been for his family. Listen. As the son of small business owners, um, I know that it's helped my parents hire more employees. It's helped us pay, us our, pay off our mortgage, help put me through college. Would you still refer to the effects of this uh, tax plan on average Americans as crumbs? Yes, there are some benefits that some are feeling in a, a, a particular way with the tax bill. My statement was really a fuller statement that says while they provide a banquet for the one, top 1%, they're giving some crumbs to other people. Here's a tax bill that they advertise as a benefit for the middle class. And did you know that 83% of the benefits of the tax bill go to the top 1%? So she's doubling down. It was crumbs except for the banquet that is uh, being enjoyed by the top 1%. And when you talk to folks across the board, and email us this morning at friends at foxnews.com. Did you benefit? Are you one of the 1%? Did you still see a benefit from this tax? And you talk to people and they said, I saw more money in my paycheck right. and it matters to me. That's not crumbs. And you have to recall when Nancy Pelosi during after the stimulus bill said, well, we're giving people 40 extra dollars per mm -hmm. paycheck. That's mm -hmm. really a big deal. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal then. Not a big deal when Trump does it. It is so weird that she would say, for the top 1%, it was a banquet. Maybe she was just channeling that she wasn't invited to the big banquet last night at the White House. She wasn't invited. <laughs> oh, could yeah. Could be true. Oh, fine, and no Democrats. No Democrats and no media. Guy. That's right. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, we've interviewed so many people that have cried and said those bonuses were not mm -hmm. crumbs to them. They've helped them pay off mortgage Absolutely. by Christmas presents. Well, she's doubling down on it. Yeah, let us know what you think, like you said. Mm -hmm. All, All right, right, let's hand it over to Jillian, who has some headlines for us. Hey, Jillian. That's right. Good morning, morning to you guys. To you at home as well. We do have some breaking news, so let's begin with this Fox News alert. And breaking overnight, a suspect arrested, accused of shooting two police officers at a Home Depot. Armando Juarez led into the Dallas County Jail. Police say he shot the officers and a security guard when they tried to arrest him, whereas captured after a high-speed chase and a five-hour manhunt. All three officers are out of surgery. That is the two police officers from Dallas and our loss prevention officer from Home Depot. They're out of surgery and we're asking for your continued prayers. All of the victims remain hospitalized in critical condition. President Trump praising his pick to lead the VA after misconduct allegations surface. Admiral Ronnie Jackson had his Senate confirmation hearing postponed, accused of creating a hostile workplace and overprescribing drugs. He was also former President Obama's doctor. Here's the best bet we have. These are the fitness report and counseling records from President Obama. Gave very high marks to Ronnie Jackson, quote, a most impressive leader who continues to perform at the flag officer level, meaning admiral. Ronnie has earned my confidence and the gratitude of my family for his diligence and knowledge. The president picked Jackson after embattled former Secretary David Shulkin resigned. Breaking overnight, Republicans defend their House seat in the Arizona special election. Now I don't say running for Congress, I won! This is awesome! <laughs> Debbie Lesko beating Democrat Hirel Tipperneni by almost six points. Republicans now turning their attention towards upcoming special elections in Texas and Ohio, both key races to keep control of the House. That's Look Your Headlines. I'll send it back to you. All right. Well, thank you very Thanks, much. Jillian. The Republican wins. Thanks, Jillian. That's Appreciate right. it. We were All covering right. that. Well, he ambushed two cops and killed them in cold blood, and he is now about to walk free. <clears throat> What's being done to keep him behind bars this morning? You know that caravan of illegal migrants we've been telling you about? Yes. Well, some of them are arriving at our U.S. border right now, but their defenders say they don't want to enter the country illegally. Really? Tommy Laren from California. Reaction coming up. A lot of promises have been made by North Korea over the years, but uh, they've never been in this position. We have been very, very tough on maximum pressure. 
We have been very tough on, uh, as you know, trade. We've been very, very tough at the border. Sanctions have been the toughest we've ever imposed on any country. We think that's a great thing for the world. Speaking of the world, foreign policy topping the agenda in President Trump's meetings with French President Emmanuel Macron. And our next guest says the president's underrated diplomacy is already having a big impact ahead of the summit with North Korea. Former Reagan assistant under Secretary of Defense uh, Michael Pillsbury is the author of The 100-Year Marathon, and he joins us from D.C. with more. Hey, Michael, good morning to you. Hi, good morning. So tell us a little bit about what the president is doing behind the scenes. Well, I think he's a master negotiator. He kind of previewed it in a book that's widely read in China it's, and the rest of Asia. It's not the art of the deal. It's another book called The America We Deserve. It has a long section in there about how to negotiate with North Korea, how to possibly walk out of the talks and use force against one target and return to the talks. Mm -hmm. It's very specific. So President Trump, I think, is respected much more abroad as a negotiator than some of his domestic critics here who, uh, as you know, are like unmercifully pummel him every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed there's a little of that going on. Michael, uh, the key to the way the president works, though, uh, with foreign nations in particular, is the element of surprise. You never know what he's yes. going to do. That's right. He actually says that in one of his books, that being unpredictable is the one way to get leverage on master negotiators you face. He's given a lot of examples in The Art of the Deal, frankly, about how he used surprise. For example, uh, when Steve Wynn alienated uh, the Hilton family, uh, it opened the door for Mr. Trump to buy a huge casino ready to go mm -hmm. on a handshake deal over the phone for $300 million, all by surprise, all within one week. This is one of the best stories, I think, in yeah. Art of the Deal. And the Chinese and North Koreans and Iranians know about this. They're, they're quite respectful of him. I didn't realize they were reading up on him. Uh, yes. One of the things that uh, Mr. Macron wanted to do was he wanted to make sure that the president, in some way, in some fashion, uh, embraced yes. the Iran deal and didn't pull out, uh, pull out on May the 12th. And yesterday, Mr. Macron said, well, maybe we need to have a new deal. And the president said, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> so what's going on with that? Well, as you know, there's been a secret diplomacy underway for more than a month to set up another agreement, sometimes called the supplemental agreement. Uh, that even the Russians have bought into as long as it doesn't disturb the original agreement. That's what uh, Macron was asking. But actually, President Trump has not agreed to that. He may, in fact, pull out and restart the sanctions after May 12th mm -hmm. so that both agreements renegotiating the old one, which has lots of flaws, and then the new supplemental, both at the same time, will be under negotiation. Right. This is another uh, tactic. Uh, Mr. Trump talks about in his books, simultaneous right. negotiations. Just like that. So, you know, <laughs> before anybody shows up, you already know what your deal is. Uh, That's Michael, right. Michael, real quickly, it look, does it look from your point of view like this has been successful with uh, the president of France? Very much so. Okay. I'd say it's a big surprise for most people. Most people thought there would be open disagreement, and instead yeah. it's this bromance going on, as you, as you showed this we morning. Noticed. All right. <laughs> All right. Michael Pillsbury. He's got preparation a great book. Is, I think preparation is the secret. He Absolutely. doesn't go into these things cold and not knowing what to do. All right. He's quite experienced. Very good. Uh, Michael Pillsbury, thank you very much. Thanks. You bet. Meanwhile, you can lose 10 pounds in 20 days. Dr. Ian Smith's going to show you how next. Welcome back. Time for some quick headlines for you. A federal judge ruling against President Trump's decision to end DACA, calling it unlawful. The administration has 90 days to better explain its position against the program, or immigration officials will begin accepting and renewing DACA applications. The courts strike again. And Border Patrol agents stopping a trailer stuffed with 59 illegal immigrants from five different countries in Laredo, Texas. The driver and passenger, both U.S. citizens and, of course, under arrest. In July, you'll remember 10 people died after being smuggled through Texas in a sweltering semi-truck with dozens of others. Never like to see that at all. We've heard the word clean used a lot. Clean eating is one of the hottest diet trends right now. And adopting a clean diet is apparently a lot easier than you think. And our next guest has a brand new book just out. It's called The Clean 20, which breaks down how to lose 10 pounds 
in 20 that days. Sounds awesome. That, that's a lot. <laughs> that's yeah, right. Joining us now is best-selling author Dr. Ian Smith. Dr. Thank hey guys, thanks for having me. Back. Good to see you as always. A day, and this is healthy. Can I tell you something? This was not written as a diet book. It was written as an eating plan. Right. And the results in our Facebook group, we have a Facebook group called The Clean 20, so people at home should join us. But the results are outrageous. People are losing on average 10 pounds. And the reason I was telling Steve earlier is because people are not having to count calories, they're eliminating all of these processed ingredients, artificial sweeteners, uh, additives, preservatives, food dyes, all these things that disrupt our mm -hmm. hormones and cause us to hold on to weight. How do you do that? Because I think those preservatives are my entire diet. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. And unfortunately, you know, if You're you look not at, alone. Yeah, right. If you look at the back of a label, most things that we're eating in a grocery store, right. if it's more than five ingredients, it's typically not clean, mm -hmm. right? And so... Well, and so these are the 20 yeah, foods. Yeah, well, these are some of the 20 foods. So it's, it's a very customizable plan. You choose your 20 foods, vegan, vegetarian, pesky, and everyone can do the plan, and it's affordable. What was so, the last word? Pescatarian. What does that mean? People who will eat fish, fish but they'll eat meat. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, 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 tell, walk us through Yes, that, okay, so these are just some of the ingredients. For example, avocados, lentils. You get to have pasta. Most programs say you can't have pasta mm -hmm. or bread. You can have it on the Clean 20. It just has to be either whole grain or whole wheat pasta okay. or 100% whole grain bread. But this is very easy, right? Lemons, chicken, lean chicken. You have seafood, tons of greens. And if you don't like what the Clean 20 list is, you can swap out. We have something called Basket Buddies. So you can say, I don't like kale. I want arugula. I don't like arugula. I want collard. So it's very flexible. Now okay. you get three meals a day and three snacks. So who doesn't eat this? This That's is breakfast. This breakfast, that is. right? It's regular breakfast, salad. right? Nothing special. Egg whites. You can use egg whites if you want. So the option is either a full egg or just egg white okay. omelet. Okay. You have snacks. The book has more than 60 recipes. They're all 30 Snack minutes right or less. Here. There's your hummus and cucumbers. You have a turkey sandwich with tomato and lettuce with and whole grain bread again. You can, okay, you can eat the bread. Yes, That's absolutely. Okay. And uh, <laughs> he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you have your tomato, mm -hmm. mozzarella, and you have pasta. You can have air pop popcorn because popcorn is a whole grain, by the way. We don't kill it with butter and salt. Right. Okay, but you know, you got to give up sure. a little bit, you know, but you know, for 20 days, anyone can do this plan. And in fact, you've been uh, listening to some of the comments online from the people in your Facebook group, and people are losing a lot of weight. They're losing a lot of weight because it's doable and their whole families can do it together and they can afford the foods. These are things you can buy in any grocery store. People hear the words clean eating, they mm -hmm. think expensive. Let me ask you something. Many of us who, I mean, I try to eat as clean as possible, mm -hmm. but every now and then I just want a carb. So I go into the pantry and I get a wheat thin or a Melba toast. Or sure. Some, sure. Just one? Yeah, crunchy. just one. <laughs> well, 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 the thing is, of them. What can I well, that's supplement, a, substitute? You don't need to. The clean 20 does not ask you to eat perfectly. The idea is we have fun foods in there. And right. a lot of diets are so restrictive and punitive if you mess up. With a clean 20, you have a bad day or a bad meal, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Keep on going the program. Okay. It self-corrects. Can okay. bacon be one of your 20? Turkey bacon is one of the 20, absolutely. Turkey so you guys, it's not close. boring, it's close, it's, it's close. Really I'm trying good. to help you. I love it. Uh, Ian, before you go, uh, you know, folks have not yet gotten your book, but they will later today. But what is one thing they can do this morning at breakfast to get themselves on the on the train yeah. toward this. Make sure they're eating protein and fiber for breakfast. It makes you feel full longer. And join our Facebook group. I'm telling you, it's amazing. The Clean 20 on Facebook. Yeah. People are just doing great things. Congratulations and on recipes. all your success. Yeah, he wrote Shred, Super Shred, The Shred Power Cleanse, Blast the Sugar Out. The Clean 20 is his 15th <laughs> book, New York Times bestseller. Very Thanks, cool. guys. Good to see you. Okay. Medical <laughs> doctor, went to <laughs> Harvard, you. Columbia. <laughs> You're Thank smart. you. I gotta it's hire not, you. No. <laughs> okay, we well, need to go to a commercial so we can eat this stuff. It looks delicious. <laughs> All right, well, moving on. Osama bin Laden's former bodyguard is living the good life on the taxpayer's dime. The outrage on that coming up next. And musician John Legend going on an anti cop tirade just hours before two officials, officers, I should say, are shot down in Dallas. Will the left ever learn? Tommy Lahren is fired up about this. She's here to react. Coming up next. But first, happy birthday to actor Al Pacino, 78 years old, 78 candles on that <laughs> cake. Mmm, <laughs> happy birthday. Don't tell me you're innocent because it insults my intelligence. Well, this is something we wanted to bring you. Right now, the Republican congressional baseball team is lacing up their cleats, returning to the field. 
It's their first practice since a gunman opened fire, seriously injuring the House Majority Whip Steve Scalise and four others last June. Hmm. Senior Capitol Hill producer Chad Pergram is live outside Eugene Simpson Stadium in Alexandria, Virginia with the latest. Chad, good morning. Hey, Chad. Well, here just a little bit ago, members of Congress who play on the team started to show up. They were stretching, doing calisthenics. They've started to play toss back and forth here. This is a very cathartic experience for many of these Republican uh, congressional baseball players because they had not been to this field since the shooting last year. The first, uh, it was the last practice before the game when Steve Scalise and the U.S. Capitol Police officers were shot. And it was uh, quite a moving moment when I was here last week with Chuck Fleischman. He's a Republican congressman from Tennessee. It was the first time he had been to the field since the the shooting and he described how he was running for his life. When it didn't stop, the barrage continued, I made a run for the dugout. All I could think about when I was running was he's going to shoot me in the back. Now, U.S. Capitol Police Chief Matt Verderosa said it was a gut punch to him to learn that two of his officers who were on the police detail for the chief majority whip, uh, Steve Scalise, to be shot here. He was about 15 miles away and responded directly to the scene, but they have definitely beefed up security for this year's practices. Last year was certainly a, uh, an eye-opener for a lot of people. It made members of Congress, I think, really feel that vulnerability that, 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 that exists the threats are real, and we will have a robust presence for the practices and the games. Now, Matt Verderosa, the Capitol Police Chief, says that there is no such thing as a routine event. It's a little bit different to protect this venue here, a baseball field. It's not like protecting an auditorium. He said they can basically protect anything. And as you walk around the field here this morning, there's a lot of Capitol Police out here. I, I should note that Steve Scalise, the majority whip, is not going to be here. He had another procedure last week and is still recovering from surgery. But Matt Micah, the former aide, now a lobbyist who helps uh, coach the team, he was out on the field with a broom and a rake getting the field ready for this morning's practice, guys. That is amazing. All right, uh, this is the first practice, and of course, Chad, uh, thank you very much for the report. It all leads to the big congressional baseball game mm -hmm. coming up, I believe, in June. Yeah. Yep. Great. All, all right. right. Let's bring in Fox News contributor Tommy Laren. Good morning, Tommy. How are you? Morning. I'm good. How are you guys? Good. We're great. Thank you. Just wanted to go over some of the news today and get your opinion. The first one we want to talk to you about is the that immigrant caravan. It has finally arrived at the uh, California-Mexico border. Um, several busloads arrived there. And you have this news anchor for Univision. His name is Enrique Acevedo. And he says this about the caravan. The caravan was never going to cross into the U.S. from the beginning. The plan was to reach the border and request asylum, and that is perfectly legal, suggesting that this group of immigrants was going to drive across the border Mad Max style, as the president did, is simply not true. We're not facing a national security crisis. We're facing a humanitarian crisis. So he defends them on Martha's show last night and says what they're doing is legal. What's your opinion? Even if they are planning to stop at the border and seek asylum, here is the cold, hard truth that the Democrats and the left don't want you to understand, and that is we cannot afford to import poverty. We have enough of our own. We understand that these people want to get into this country, and like I've said before, if I wasn't in this country, I'd want to get in too. But the fact is... We can't afford to let everybody in this country that simply wants to come in this country. We have to have merit-based immigration. We have to look at who's coming in, and we have to be selective. A lot of these folks coming in are largely unskilled and uneducated. They're coming into our country. We've already got an illegal immigration crisis. We need to pay attention to who's coming and who's knocking at the door. That's the cold, hard truth, and it might not make the left feel good, but it's the truth. All right, so we've got those two bus fulls uh, apparently going to ask for asylum. But, the, but Tommy, you know, the, the group of over a thousand has uh, splintered. Who knows how many may have tried to cross the border illegally, might already be here. That's the problem with a porous border is that we don't know who is able to get in, who is not. That's why building the wall is so important, making sure we have an immigration policy that is enforced and that works to mm -hmm. make sure we know who's coming into this country, how long they're staying, we're able to track them once they're here. Whether they're asylum seekers, they're immigrants, what have you, we need to know who's coming into our country. There is nothing intolerant about that. That's called national security. Absolutely. Well, Tommy, on another topic, uh, your favorite reporter gave an interview, I'm just kidding, Jim McCoskey, 
Acosta gave an interview yesterday with Variety, talked about voters and gave us a, an input into his mindset. Take a listen to what Jim Acosta said. The problem is, is that uh, people around the country don't know it's an act. They're not in on the act, and they take what he says very seriously, and they take attacks from Sean Spicer and Sarah Sanders and, and what they do to us on a daily basis very seriously. They don't have all their faculties in, in some cases. Their, their, their elevator might not hit all floors. So the, they don't have all their faculties. They're just not smart enough, Tommy. I never get tired of the leftist mainstream media insulting Trump voters because it makes it even easier for us to go back in 2020 and reelect him. The more they tell us that we're stupid, the more we're going to go back and vote for Donald Trump. So thank you for the boost. <laughs> and I would caution the leftist mainstream media because I know that they want to see a Democrat take it in 2020. So let's have a cautionary tale from one Hillary Clinton who called us a basket of deplorables and also insulted our intelligence. How did that work out for Hillary? <laughs> okay. All right. And, and the other part was that he said that uh, what the president does, it's just all an act. Yeah, yep. just all an act. Mm. All right. Uh, meanwhile, it sounds like uh, John Legend was responding to a tweet with an AP report about a golf club apologizing for calling police on black uh, women members. And then he tweeted this out. Hmm. He said, please stop calling the police on black people who are just trying to live. Please stop. Police shoot us for no blank reason at all. Please stop. What's your reaction? Well, I think everybody on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram saw my reaction last night. This fires me up more than anything because this is the same anti-cop rhetoric that puts our police officers in danger. When you try to get your millions of followers to believe that the police are out to murder black people, when the police are out to victimize half of this country, that's when the war on cops is reignited. These celebrities don't understand the power of their words. Now, I understand if you take issue with a certain incident that happened then address that. You do not need to go on an anti-cop tirade because that puts real police officers in danger. The same police officers that are out there protecting these communities. Why these celebrities can't seem to understand that is beyond me. But as you guys know, nothing infuriates me more. Uh, completely unrelated. Uh, two more police officers in Dallas were uh, shot on Tuesday afternoon yesterday. I think they were responding to uh, a call at a Home Depot. Uh, mm. The shooter was immediately taken into custody. Every day they put their lives on the line and then <clears throat> you see people talk like that. Mm -hmm. Tommy Laren, thanks, thanks for your time. Appreciate thanks, Tommy. It. All right, Jillian has some headlines for us. Hey, Jillian. That's right. Good morning to you guys. Good morning to you at home as well. A cold-blooded cop killer says he's excited to walk away a free man. Herman Bell telling the New York Post that he feels good about being released from prison on Friday. It comes weeks after a state judge rejected an appeal filed by the widow of one of his victims to block his parole. Lawyers for the Patrolman's Benevolent Association plan to file another appeal today. NYPD officers Joe Piagentini and Waverly Jones were lured and ambushed by Bell and two others in 1971. The former bodyguard of 9-11 mastermind Osama bin Laden is living the good life on the taxpayer dime in Germany. According to local reports, he receives $1,400 in welfare each month, and police won't send him back to his homeland of Tunisia over fears he might be tortured. The man, only known as Sammy A, was investigated for his alleged ties to al-Qaeda in 2006, but was never criminally charged. The Fresno State professor who celebrated the death of Barbara Bush on Twitter will keep her job. The university president says although Rana Jarrar's comments were insensitive and appropriate and an embarrassment to the university, they are protected free speech under the First Amendment. The English teacher is standing by her rant saying, quote, I am not the only person who has stated the belief that Barbara Bush was a racist. Guys. Thank you very much, Jillian. I, I did read that apparently a number of, of the big donors at that university are thinking twice now about uh, I understand. Donations. As I understand they should. That. Free speech oftentimes only exists if it comes from the left in those places. But she can say that, but they can also pull their money. That's right. Absolutely. All right. Let us know what you think about that and everything else we've been talking about so far. Meanwhile, remember the professor who leaked James Comey's memos to the press? Well, it turns out he actually, we didn't know this, was a special agent that James Comey uh, gave special status to. It's a brand new bombshell, details in 18 minutes. Plus, in just a few hours, the Supreme Court will take up the president's third travel ban case. Our next guest says the future of our country is at stake with what they decide. And we'll bring it to you. Yeah, we're one big country nation, that's right. We're all across the map, down city streets. 
The Supreme Court taking up President Trump's third travel ban today. So what is at stake? According to our next guest, it's the future of our country. Frank Buckley is a professor of law at the Scalia Law School at George Mason University and the author of the book, The Republic of Virtue, How We Tried to Ban Corruption, Failed, and What We Can Do About It. And he joins me now. Frank, thanks for being here. So you Thank say you the future me. of our, the safety of our country is at stake based on this decision. Why do you say that? Well, what has happened is certain judges, federal judges, have joined the resistance and they're doing politics. They've You're talking about the lower courts have challenged this and now the Supreme Court has an opportunity to overturn that. That's correct. And that's probably what's going to happen. But were that not to happen, then we'd see the federal bench roughly in revolt over a political issue. I mean, what they've done is out of the million words that were said by the candidate, they've taken some words, 30, 40 words, isolated them from everything else and said, right, anything that Trump does on the subject that might tangentially relate to Muslims is improper. Okay. So we're going to shut it down. And when that happens, here's the danger. The danger is when the judges decide they can do politics, right, then what's to stop the president from acting like a judge? The idea that it's only the Supreme Court that tells us what the Constitution is, that's something generally accepted. But Abraham Lincoln didn't believe that. And it's Thomas true. Jefferson didn't believe that. Judicial so, supremacy is not is not a is not a it was not something our founders they saw three co-equal branches. So when it comes right. to a this type of a ban, you're right. They're using what he said on the campaign trail, not looking at the constitutional uh, nature of it. Let's put the countries that that, that this latest constitutional ban or a ban would would ban travel from. Iran, Libya, North Korea, Somalia, Syria, Venezuela, and Yemen. So notably, North Korea and Venezuela, not Muslim-majority uh, countries. Will, why, will, why do you believe the Supreme Court will uphold this ban? Well, just take a look at that third ban. I mean, what the court did in Hawaii was to say, right, we're going to, we're going to exclude Venezuela and North Korea, and we'll just do it for the rest. I mean, that's, that's just sheer politics, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's dangerous, and it invites a rebuke from the president. And those terrible words of Andrew Jackson, the chief justice has made his law, now let him enforce it. <laughs> Frank, how do we pull, can we pull politics out of the bench? Is it just putting in better jurists, or can, is there anything the executive branch can do to change this? Well, it's the, the third branch, the judges have become politicized, but there's one further danger which is really important here, and that is the tendency of judges in Hawaii or whatever to issue countrywide injunctions. So mm. what happens is a judge in Hawaii, in Honolulu, is going to rule for the entire country. And that's dangerous because plaintiffs, um, you know, liberal plaintiffs will sure. forum shop, they'll pick the right guy, helps to be in the Ninth Circuit, and they'll tie things up. So you mentioned this is the third travel ban, right? So yep. there was one, you know, it was shut down by a court. Number two was shut down by a court. Again, countrywide injunctions. And now we're on number three. What will there be, four, five, six, Well, it's seven? amazing. It has puzzled a lot of us that one uh, justice in Hawaii can, can stop what a president is doing. The Supreme yeah. Court will get an opportunity to hear that today. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what they rule. Frank Buckley, thank you for your time. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right, well, a new threat in the skies. The NYPD on alert for terrorists using drones to attack the U.S. Brett Velikovich used drones to hunt terrorists and says the danger's real. He joins us live next hour to talk about it. Plus, there's some of the hottest new cars on the market, and they can save you a lot of money. Their uh, windows are closed this morning, though. Janice is going to take you for a drive next because she is bold and unafraid. And the sunroof is closed. <laughs> nice Hi. There are more and more cars on the market that will help save you money. We are out here in the rain, but we're still going to have fun with some of our newest yes, fuel yes. efficient cars. Our Fox News transportation That's expert. Right. That's right. Look at that fancy title, That's right. Kadil. Uh, Mike. Tell me what you you're the only one to come out here in the rain, no, it's right? Because I'm the weather person and That's I appreciate right. all of the elements. That's right. We've got five cars and it's raining, so we're going to move quickly through them. This is okay. the Mini Countryman, and this is this is their 
electric plug-in hybrid version. So it's an incredible vehicle, 270 miles on range. And what's great about it is this is the biggest mini they've made to date. On the inside, it's got packed with technology and all the great creature comforts that you'd want in a vehicle. And it's also sporty and doesn't look like an environmentally conscious type vehicle that uh -huh. you're accustomed to seeing. People want fuel efficient cars, $36, right? $36,000. That's incredible. It's a great car. All right, right here we've got the Toyota and this is the Highlander Hybrid. I love the Highlander. I know. And the best part is if you're looking in the market for a five passenger, like three row type vehicle, two row vehicle, this is a perfect vehicle for you. Five USB ports for the for the mom and all of us, right? So me with kids, my kids want USB ports. We've got them in this. This will start in the mid thirty thousand dollar category and it's got Toyota safety sense in it, which is front crash avoidance. With the way the weather is today, you want safety in your car. Absolutely. This is one of the best in the market. So this for is it. good to handle in the weather. Good though. to handle in the weather. All right, but if you do want to go off road and in the pothole here oh, in New York, yeah. right? You want to go off road roading, Janice? You can't do it unless you're in a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. This is one of the lightest weight ones they've had. By the way, sales for Jeep up 44 percent. They can't keep them on dealership really? lots. Really? Why do you think that is? It's because people want to go off road these days. They want yeah. to really take the family off road. They want to enjoy the vehicle. And this thing is packed with technology. Now, why is it in a segment about vehicles that are economically friendly. This uh -huh. one's got called e-torque in it, and e-torque replaces the alternator, which is a car term, with an electric motor. So it gives you better fuel wow. economy, and it's built with aluminum and all that kind of stuff in it as well. So it's lightweight. And this is the way of the future, isn't way it? Way of the future, and it'll start in the $30,000 as well. I like it. One of my favorite cars here, you guys, this is the Eco Sport by Ford Motor Company. It has a one liter motor under the hood. What does that mean? It means it's super small, but it has the Eco Boost with it, and that gives you great fuel economy. This one here on the Plaza is only a two liter model. It's a nice family vehicle, plenty of headroom. I'm 6'3, I fit in it comfortably. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, best part, under $20,000. Wow! Under 20 grand That's for this vehicle. That's amazing. Now look, look at this little All right, bug. This is a showstopper for me here, and I like this vehicle. Now, this is the fifth generation of the BMW i3. This one's called the wow. i3S. It's bolder, more aggressive, and it's all electric. So, what does that mean? 180 miles with a range extender on a single charge. Starting price $47,000 on the interior, all recycled products. This is amazing. And website real quick, Mike? My website, OurAutoExpert.com, is where you can find all the information on these vehicles and uh, my tour traveling the country in the rain with you, Jan. I love it. I love it. Even in the rain, you do so great. Mike Hodel, thank you for coming. Thank all you. All right, back inside where it's dry. All right. Thank Good you very job. much. Great Good job. Meanwhile, coming up, Sean Spicer, Michelle Mel.